Okay, so we had this gorgeous TR7 slash 8 dropped off to us uh, at the end of last week. So we're just going to conduct our preliminary road test before we start working on it. It's currently fitted with a 3.5 with a uh, Offy 360 and a Holly 390, which as you all know, following our Facebook page, is not our oh, that, not our carburetor of choice, and that's why, because of the um, incredibly poor driving experience, not getting the throttle response we should be getting. The car drives incredibly well though in terms of smoothness on the road. There's no nasty clunks or clangs, which is why we do these road tests initially. The reason this vehicle's come in is for one of our 3.9 engines. Um, the reason for that is because it's actually got quite a nasty tap when the engine gets warm, which the customer obviously isn't happy with, and this engine's been in here quite a few years. Uh, supposedly it was rebuilt, um, but he's always had issues with it and he wants a fresh start with an RPI full build and uh, from past experiences of our engines I can't blame him. So here we are back at uh, RPI Engineering Headquarters and here is the TR7 we've just been out in with the Rover V8 engine fitted. As you can see it is immaculate, incredibly well looked after. And under the bonnet is just as clean. I'm sure the guys in the workshop will love working on this. They'll be able to, uh, they won't have to wash their hands before having their dinner, I reckon. Um, the engine's now being removed, so we've got Chocolate Steve with us here um, removing the engine. And Handsome Steve is back with us behind the camera, so better videos today. Um, but before we start, I thought we'd better explain these names. So, um, Chocolate Steve, what, what's that in your top there? Yeah, tea break. Ah, okay. Um, You've got a couple of special drawers in your toolbox, haven't you? Yeah, you must not touch. Okay, um, so the reason Steve, Workshop Steve, is called Chocolate Steve is because there's a couple of dedicated drawers in his toolbox to, um, well, sweeties. But why is he called Handsome Steve? Um, I think you better take this one, hadn't you, Steve? Okay, so uh, here we're both Steves. I'm uh, just going to show you a few things as we, as we actually discover them here, removing the engine. So first thing we've discovered is the breather pipe here, which goes through into the air cleaner to scavenge any crate case pressure. Um, hasn't really been fitted properly. You can see it's been working its way through the rubber here, so little bits of rubber will be uh, uh, getting in through to the engine. Um, been chafing because it's just been fitted for an open hole in the air cleaner here. When we supply our Weber kits out, we actually supply the correct fitment that goes onto these preformed areas here, which you drill out and the pipe can then clamp onto them. Uh, we obviously also do our power plenum as well, which increases the abil engine's ability to scavenge from the crankcase. So um, yeah, just thought we'd show you that. And now we can remove the carburetor. Um, as you know, we're doing away with this carburetor because uh, we can get far better road tune on the Weber carb. And this is the Offenhauser 360 intake, which again, we don't use because effectively it's a drag racing intake manifold because it's open port. And here is the intake manifold we'll be fitting. It's the Offenhauser dual port. The difference being your primaries of the carburetor are here and the secondaries of the carburetor are here. So pretty much the entire time you're driving on the road, you're on your primaries. Now with this intake manifold, the primaries are here. It's open port, one huge port all the way through to each um, intake valve. With this intake manifold, we're actually split. So if you can roll that over, Steve, please. You can see we've got two ports to each intake valve, which is obviously why it's called the dual port. The ideal thing with this is at low RPM, on light throttle, on cruise, you're only using half the port size. So the velocity of the air is far greater, which really helps suspend those atomized fuel particles, keeps everything mixed nicely, so you get a much better burn, much better efficiency out of the air and fuel mixture. Whereas with this, 
for wide open throttle drag racing and, and things like that, yeah, no problem, as much air and fuel in as you can get, but for everyday road use, even track use and things like that, this is the carb uh, the intake manifold to always go for. So. Okay, so Steve's been working his magic, had a nice productive few hours. Uh, the intake manifold's now off, the ancillaries and front end system, uh, timing cover and everything off the engine as well. It's allowed us to do a little bit of uh, inspection on, on what's uh, actually been built up, what we've got here. So we've noticed we've got a mismatch of 1971 and 1975 very early style rockers, which we can tell by the date stamp on them here. Uh, they've actually got a smaller pad that sits on top of the valve, um, not the style of rocker we use, we use later style genuine rockers. Uh, we can also tell that tappet preload hasn't been set, there's no shims under there. Um, chances are they should have used some shims because the heads will have undoubtedly been skimmed if they'd done the job properly. Um, so the block is an early block, pre-82. So SD1 block, uh, you can tell obviously we've got smaller webbing uh, across the valley here. And um, yeah, I think it's about ready to be pulled out now. So the job's going really, really nicely. Are you happy so far? I'm happy. Excellent. Right, well... Um, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I'll start. Thank you very much. It's time for one of them, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Steve. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, first of all, the TR8 engine. Obviously, 3.9 block, uh, fully pressure tested. 270 Piper 270 camshaft been installed. Uh, Cloy's duplex timing chain set on there as well. And if we spin it over. You'll see with all of our 3.5 and 3.9 builds, because the blocks aren't cross bolted, they've got very small sidewall contact uh, on the mains caps. So we use the ARP stud kits. Uh, so ARP main stud kit and also ARP big end stud kit. So the way we've been building our 3.5 and 3.9 engines for, for quite some time now. Never had a failure with it. Um, every, the reasons we do all of this is always explained in our literature through our eBay shop or, or when uh, customers phone us up who are doing a 3.5-3.9 build we, we talk over the merits of uh, building an engine that way. So on to the ancillaries. Uh, as you can see, lots of time spent in cleaning everything. Obviously a lot of parts from this engine were already clean as you can imagine. Um, but the sump that's been stone chipped with hammerite paint. Uh, other makes and models of paint are available of course but that's our, ours and the customer's preference on this sump. Uh, we're going to be installing a brand new facet red top fuel pump. Obviously it's going magna core plug leads and the RPI ignition amplifier onto one of our brand new distributors with the magnetic pickup in there. Uh, not that you can see it but a little magnetic pickup in there so that's what we'll be using on this vehicle. Um, the customer's original starter motor and alternator, there's nothing wrong with them, again they've just been inspected, make sure there's no fractures in any mounting points, uh, cleaned up, uh, engine mounts etc. Now onto the more interesting bits, obviously we've got the timing cover, so again it's been cleaned, uh, inspected, so visual inspection on the mating surface um, and also in the oil pump housing area, so where the gears are running we're making sure there's no sharp shards sticking out in here. And uh, yeah, Holly's uh, inspected that and said he's happy with that. It's Holly's seal of approval. Brand new oil pump gears, reconditioned oil pump base, uh, so it's faced, um, everything's checked over. Again, the checks we do are probably the key thing, really, knowing what to look for in these. Um, and it will have a brand new pressure relief valve and bucket in there. Brand new push rods, why reuse old ones when there might be something wrong with them, just stick fresh ones in. OEM tappets of course. The rockers, we've now obviously got a full matching set, um, built up onto brand new shafts. So these rockers have been lightly honed on the inside to make sure there's no, again, swarf contamination in the soft alley that would scratch and score the, the new shafts. Uh, full matching set from 1997 now rather than the mismatch that this engine had originally. These have got the larger pad on as well because they're the latest spec, spec uh, rockers. Moving on to cylinder heads, this engine's having stage one heads. So um, I've actually got a standard cylinder head as well here and Steve's going to try and focus and get enough light in to show you some of the differences. Um, so this is the stage one head. Uh, this is standard sat here behind it. So, first thing is stage one heads, three angle valve seats. I don't know if Steve can show this. The colour difference on the actual seat itself will show the three different angles. So, that has an effect of when the valve is actually on that first opening section and first closing section, just as it's coming on and off of the cam lobe. 
Um, you're getting maximum airflow over the, over the valve seat as, as things are just opening. Um, then after that, on the exhaust valve here, um, you can see this has been smoothed off here, whereas on the cylinder head behind it, um, if I pick it up we can get a bit more light into it, you can see actually there's a hell of a lip there which is going to disrupt the exhaust flow. So that's one of the bigger sort of restrictions that we get rid of. Everything is lightly ported throughout uh, and port matched as well at each end. So on inlet and exhaust. So uh, bulleted guides, Piper valve springs as well on all our stage one cylinder heads, um, which are an anti-bind spring as well. I've just got one coil uh, taken out. Uh, so yeah, that's the cylinder head area. Obviously brand new valves as well. We don't reuse the old valves. So always, always brand new valves, brand new guides. Okay, so uh, Holly's now got this engine to a stage where it's ready to go into the car. Um, so intake manifold gaskets on, intake manifold as well obviously. Customer's original chrome rocker covers uh, there. Distributors in, fitted, that's all timed up, ready to go. Obviously magna core plug leads. Um, it's fitted the starter motor on, engine mounts. So I think this pretty much concludes this video. Um, so the next thing we will post on Facebook for this car is the engine actually being fitted uh, and then the ancillaries being uh, going on to it. Okay, so the engine's here with the TR8, must mean it's time to be fitted. Those vigilant amongst you will notice a couple of things. Firstly, we've stripped the engine just down a little bit, taken the ignition leads off and also the water pump. Just gives us a little bit of extra room to play within, uh, to put the engine in the engine bay. Secondly, new zip. The old one broke, sent the picture to mum, new zip fitted, nice one. The engine's pretty much in place, obviously you just got to get the input shaft into the uh, back of the crank. So uh, we'll leave the boys to just do a little bit of wiggling around there. Um, Steve, what, what are these? Ah, this is motivation. Oh, okay. When the engine's in, I get a boost. Okay. Ignition, car, exhaust, fluids, test drive. Oh, okay. Sounds good to me. Okay, so um, looks like Steve's been quite busy with the TR8. I think he's bolted quite a few bits on. Uh, let's take a look and see how he's getting on. Um, first thing I noticed, Steve, you've been really busy. Yep, distributors fitted, leads, no, boats. No, you've eaten lots of chocolate. Yeah, no, small reward. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, you've got the water pump on, the pulleys, yeah, belts on there. On. Full ignition system, A&R yeah. amplifier, Bosch coil. Full stems, exhaust have been refitted. Excellent, and everything was cleaned up under there yes. as well, yeah. wasn't it? So that's cool. Yeah. This is genuinely the first time we've fired up, so I'm going to be on the throttle and the distributor. We cold. build all of our... Sorry? So the headers are cold. The headers are cold, yeah. <laughs> so it's all cold down there. Um, we build all our engines on TDC with the rotor arm pointing at number one, so we shouldn't be too far off on the timing. Uh, we've just primed it with fuel, so we've got fuel in the float bowl. We've given the accelerator a couple of pumps just to squirt a bit of fuel in, so uh, let's see what happens. A bit more advanced. Have you gone two turns out on the mixture screws? Yeah. So our engines prime up to the tappets quite quickly because when Holly builds them, he actually primes all of the oil galleries with oil. So he'll assemble it with the oil filter on, full of oil obviously. The oil pump will be primed with grease or Vaseline. And then from the cylinder heads, he'll pump oil down the oil galleries and the tappets into the oil, oil galleries for the tappets all um, the prime floor as well ready. Alright, so we're now um, 3.9, stage one. With the full RPI ignition kit and uh, Weber 500 carburetor of course now. We've done our road set up on this, so we've got ignition timing set, 
and uh, as much advance as we can get without pinking. The car's now uh, really, really smooth throughout the entire rev range. We've put uh, quite a few miles on this already, I think probably 60, 70 miles on it already. Just a nice local mileage. Just done the um, 30 mile an hour in fifth gear, and actually, we can do far better than that. I don't know if Steve can get on the speedo here, but I'm now in fifth. We are doing, well, according to the speedo, about 15 in fifth mile an hour. Uh, fifth mile an hour? Fifth gear, even. Fifth gear, we're now 20, 25. This is a carbureted engine, remember? 30, 35, we're now pulling strong. Not a lot wrong with that. 